You like to call us hate preachers and, and people that hate uh, other people. No, we love people. You bunch of can go to hell. That's taking advantage of me. Dude, you <laughs> will go to hell. I am not joking. Look at me. Hello, lovely people. My name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. This is going to be good. It's going to be cathartic. This is going to, this is going to be cleansing. This is going to be my last official solo video on Kent Hovind and Matt Powell and Whack an Atheist Wednesday. Collaborations are better because you have moral support to share in the disgust, but doing these videos alone, dealing with the level of disrespect and the lies and the misrepresentations of me that Hovind shares and he keeps name dropping me everywhere, I'm over it. Part of the reason as well is that thanks to Hovind's videos constantly being removed by YouTube for breaking terms of service and starting a new channel and flip-flopping between the new and the old one and all of this has resulted in fewer subscribers and fewer views for Kent Hovind. One of the reasons he piggybacks so much on any piece of content on the internet that has his name in it is, let's be honest, because those videos about him get 10 times the views his actual personal live streams do. He's branched out into basically every video service available, even Dailymotion, which apparently people still use. My point here is that Kent's inability to utilize new media means that his online presence is starting to falter, and I, for one, am happy to say goodbye and watch him fade into obscurity. Before we get properly into the video, I would like to actually address Kent Hovind and Matt Powell specifically. Kent finds my videos too long to be able to do more than rip a couple of moments from context, so I thought I'd better do this early for him. You are the most disingenuous and dishonest pair of people I have ever had the misfortune to interact with online, and I used to react to incel forums. You continue to misrepresent me on your live streams, you continue to pretend you want to have a debate with me while my emails trying to schedule such a debate go unanswered. You continue to act like you wish to have a back and forth, even face-to-face -face discussion, whilst deleting or banning my comments, even on videos that directly address me. Before you ask, no, my comments don't have any swear words in them. There's no legitimate reason for deleting my comments beyond removing my ability to answer the lies. This is despite the fact that your own comments are publicly visible and usually replied to by myself on my channel. You can continue to do these things, but everyone is aware that this posturing you have of wanting to have an honest discussion and debate is pure lies. I address you here because, as per my last email, despite your false claims about wanting to have an interaction between us, you have removed my ability to be part of the discussion. I am left only with my personal channel to call you out because this is the only format you can't delete. Kent. I am not your honey. I am not your dear child. I am an adult woman and a professional and I deserve respect. God knows I have more real degrees than you do. I will not have my voice silenced by you. I will not allow your dripping condescension to go unmentioned. And I will no longer ignore the fact that you do not speak to any male content creator the way you speak to me. To quote a Matt Powell comment that I will share with you all later, I'm taking the gloves off. I've exercised an amount of restraint that I consider reasonable, in criticizing somebody's content. Where matters are personal, I tend not to go into heavy details, especially if those matters are as of yet unresolved. Kent and Matt are not deserving of that restraint. If Kent is gonna keep lying about his dissertation, I'm gonna show the parts of it on screen that prove him a liar. If Matt Powell is gonna pretend he's a nice man because he doesn't swear, I'm gonna share his own comments directing horrific profanity at people. I'm gonna share the audio of him screaming at a church member. I'm gonna share my ignored emails, my deleted comments. I'll even join Kent and Matt in resorting to some ad hominem if it proves their hypocrisy. Prepare your butts, lovely people, for the snark and the spice are gonna be heavy in this one. <laughs> You're getting both barrels, mate. Buckle the fuck up. Before we get into responding to the Whack and Atheist videos, I'd like to go back to Kent's whole I'm great at debates, atheists won't debate me thing. Kent keeps expressing a desire to debate people, but he won't do another debate with Professor Dave. He won't debate Aaron Ra again without having a mute button. He ignores my attempts to organize a debate on my own channel. And those are just a few examples. Here is a fabulous recent clip from Kent that highlights not only how irritating, but how pointless a debate with this man is. I don't know that I can prove the Bible is true. I think really the burden of proof's on you though to prove it's not true. It's literally the opposite. This man calls himself doctor. We'll talk about this more when his dissertation comes up, but let's just remind ourselves quickly that Kent Hovind is not a real doctor. He occasionally acknowledges the fact that he doesn't have any accredited doctorates. He still calls himself Dr. Hovind on his YouTube channel and everywhere online because it makes him sound more qualified than he is. 
because he's a charlatan. So this man who claims to be a doctor, literally, is either just kind of lying and manipulating the truth again, or he actually doesn't understand the burden of proof, in which case, you can't have a fucking debate with a person like that. We'll just grab a quick definition from Google to help Ken out. When two parties are in discussion and one makes a claim that the other disputes, the one who makes the claim typically has the burden of proof to justify or substantiate that claim. As Carl Sagan said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. If you're the one making the claim, the onus is on you to prove it. It's not that hard, Kent. This is a debate with Ken Hovind. Kent, you believe the Bible is the literal word of God? Well, that's right. Can you prove that? No. Th that's it. The debate's over. What a waste of time. <laughs> I've had quite a lot of comments recently asking why Kent isn't in prison, and I'd love to clarify for everyone, featuring some extremely cringy footage of Kent himself. For anyone who is out of the loop, Kent Hovind was found guilty of domestic assault against his ex-wife, Cindy. He has since filed a notice of appeal, which is why he's not currently serving a sentence. Here's the appeal document so you can see. Notice is hereby given that the above-named defendant, Kent Hovind, appeals to the circuit court from the judgment of conviction entered by the above direct court, adjudging the defendant to be guilty of the offence of DV Assault 3rd, and as punishment therefore, sentencing the defendant as follows, one year in jail to serve 30 days, fine at $500, costs and restitution $2,124.72, and they've demanded trial by jury here. The word on the street <laughs> is that nothing will happen until the new year, which I expect to be true. So we'll just, we'll, we'll just keep an eye out and see what happens, shall we? God knows Kent has a history of abusing the legal system. He likes to drag everything out as long as possible, as though that's going to somehow absolve him of his crimes. While we're here and talking about his awful treatment of Cindy, because Kent is a biblical literalist, I'd like to take a moment at exactly what the Bible says about divorce and remarriage. Malachi 2.16 I hate divorce, says the Lord God of Israel. There's a website called Got Answers that I've always found really useful for in-depth answers to biblical questions, so I'll share their explanation and link that down below. There's going to be a lot of links in the description today. I will try and keep it as organised as I can. The controversy over whether divorce and remarriage is allowed according to the Bible revolves primarily around Jesus' words in Matthew 5.32 and 19.9. The phrase, except for marital unfaithfulness, is the only thing in scripture that possibly gives God's permission for divorce and remarriage. Some understand 1 Corinthians 7.15 as another exception, allowing remarriage if an unbelieving spouse divorces a believer. However, the context does not mention remarriage, but only says a believer is not bound to continue a marriage if an unbelieving spouse wants to leave. Given Hoven's three divorces and four marriages don't remotely meet those requirements, I wonder what his excuse is as a biblical literalist. Kent recently disappeared for a week or so, leaving Professor Powell to act as his receptionist. According to Powell, he was on vacation, but in actuality, when Kent returned, he revealed that he had been in Miami discussing his appeal with his lawyer. Brace yourselves to be extremely embarrassed at what they've come up with. I spent five hours day before yesterday with an attorney uh, in Miami. He said, here's what she needs to do, very simple. Publish a simple letter like this. I, Cindy Lincoln, hereby apologize for lying about my former husband, Ken Hovind, body slamming me at a year, a year ago. He did not body slam me. I made that story up to make him look bad. As you can clearly hear on the audio recordings he made, I was the aggressor the entire time. He was calm and simply protecting his phone and his body by pushing me off to the side as I lunged at him. I behaved very badly that day and I'm sorry. I'm also very sorry I went to the atheist websites for support. I encourage all to visit there and listen to Dr. Hovind's amazing messages that have changed countless lives. I also ask that you support him and his ministry financially and that they, as they seek to get the gospel out. We're supposed to believe that a lawyer came up with this? It's very infantilizing the way he asks her to talk about herself, but that's women in this kind of church. That's unfortunately what happens to them. We know how condescending Kent is to women. I'm very sorry. I've been very bad. Kent is wonderful. But to add in, you should all go and visit Dr. Hoven's amazing place and give him all your money because he's the best person in the world. Kent's crazy. <laughs> This is crazy. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. I know that was super cringy. All right, now that we're caught up on Kent's legal entanglements, it is time to review Kent's latest live stream content about me and correct the <laughs> mistakes he's made. Like I said, there are going to be a bunch of links in the description. If you are interested and you want to catch up on all of Kent's most recent legal entanglements and just what the hell is going on with him and his ex-wives and stuff recently, there is a Paulogia video featuring Atheist Junior that goes into detail. It's really, really good, so I'll link that down below. Let's get let's get back into Whack an Atheist and see what Kent has to say about me today. It gets a little bit complicated 
because he's shouted me out in about five different videos since the last Wackinasius Wednesday we did, which was not very long ago. So the first one in which he mentioned me is now privated because Kent Hovind, YouTube. Fortunately, Robert Beatty continues to document Kent's online presence. So we have some of the comments that he said that I wanted to respond to. Essentially, he's upset at atheists for constantly talking about his dissertation being bullshit. For some reason, he really focused on the fact that we all laugh at the fact that it starts, hello, my name is Kent Hovind. Doesn't matter that the rest of it is horribly written, that the formatting is dog shit, none of that matters. So he's talking about Patriot University, the absolutely unaccredited definitely not state-sanctioned university that cannot give real doctorates, just to remind everybody. This is him talking about them. I asked them, I would like to do my dissertation. I would like to do my dissertation. What would you like for it to be on? Because that's how you talk to your supervisor when you're fucking doing a degree. The leaders of Patriot University said, we love the seminar you give, Brother Hovind. The way that Kent talks about other people talking about him is like he's a fucking god. Like, he has an actual god complex. <laughs> we love the seminar you give, Brother Hovind, your creation seminar needs to be in writing. Would you transcribe this and we'll use this as your dissertation? I said okay. So I had the whole thing transcribed. It starts off, hello, my name is Ken Hovind. I was transcribing the video, you morons. Yes, he did call all of us that make this joke. He was specifically talking about me to start with, but he was referring to everyone who makes the same joke as morons, so that's charming. So we're expected to believe that the reason his dissertation starts, hello, my name is Kent Hovind, is because he had it transcribed from his creation seminar and presumably not edited. I mean, this is the first sentence, so he could have very easily had it transcribed and then edited it, but he clearly didn't because, well, there's no other reason that first bit wouldn't change, based on it being a transcription, and then he could have corrected some of the spelling mistakes. So what he's saying is that he had it transcribed, he had his creation seminar transcribed, and then didn't edit it, and that's why his dissertation is the way it is. But is it? Fortunately for us, we only just went over the start of Kent Hovind's dissertation. That's why he's responding to it, but still, it helps us out here a lot. Patriot University, dissertation for Doctor of Philosophy in Christian Education, except not a real doctorate, because it's not an accredited university. Here's the introduction, hello, my name is Kent Hovind. So, if if the reason it begins that way is because it's transcribed from a seminar that he then didn't or couldn't edit, why does it also say, in this book I'll be covering, I must in the final analysis take the blame credit for what is written in this book. Some of the things in this book I couldn't prove to anyone. And then he explains what's in each chapter of the book. Oh my god, he's a liar. Ken Hovind's lying. Now listen, I could forgive somebody for forgetting exactly how they wrote something in 1991. That's very forgivable. But he's responding to my video reading his dissertation, where the evidence is on screen, where it's there visually. This is the most amazing thing to me about Kent Hovind's lies, is that he will lie when the evidence is next to him. On a, on a big screen. And he just shamelessly will be like, oh, it says that there? No, it doesn't. That's something else. Oh, see that? That thing that I said there? That's a quote from me? That's not true. It's unbelievable. The mind really boggles. He, in this introduction, he explains where it came from. What he says is that my weekly radio broadcast has been instrumental in answering a number of questions, blah, blah, blah. We've selected some of the most helpful topics from the radio show and developed them into chapters toward this book. It's just not a transcription of his creation seminar. It's not remotely a transcription of his creation seminar, unless it is, and he lied in his introduction that he wrote in 1991. Either way, he's lying. It's just whether he's lying now or lying in his dissertation. I apologize that we couldn't actually use that footage. Like I say, he likes to just either private videos or YouTube takes them down or yeah, it's a whole mess with Kent. Now we're actually going to whack an atheist Wednesday. Unfortunately, <laughs> we can't start at the beginning. He he starts talking about me about seven minutes in. We can't really start until about 13 minutes in because the audio is broken. It also starts midway through a sentence, right? So it starts like this. Remember when Matt Powell joined to be their tech guy? <laughs> so skip ahead until the audio is fixed because I genuinely, I can't respond to it because I can't fucking hear it. Even his fans in the audience are all screaming about how broken the audio is and how annoying it is that they haven't realized yet. 13 minutes. Imagine believing. Yes, today. it's alive and we can actually hear what's going on. Thank God for that. Single dance point. Emma, my dear child. You Look at the screenshot he chose. How rude. You accept the crazy idea that all the matter of the universe was in a dot. 
Imagine believing something that crazy. Imagine believing a T-Rex turned into a chicken. Do you stop and imagine what you believe? Think about it. My dear child, stop that, okay? Do you really, really believe that? Yes. I mean, not the way you're describing it, because you're, descri because you're misrepresenting evolution to make it sound sillier. So technically, not really. But yes, I believe in evolution. We've established that. You can put up a picture of my face that looks very silly and look in the camera and laugh at how silly I am. But yes, I do believe that. And this is a waste of time. You want the truth? You can't handle the truth. The truth is everything, all the fossils are the same age. There's no such thing as a fossil record. There's no such thing as a fossil record. That is a new one for me. For all the fossils, nearly all of them, formed in the big flood in the days of Noah. How many animals died today in the world? Millions. How many are going to fossilize? Probably none. Takes very special conditions for creatures to fossilize, especially when they find dinosaur skeletons fully articulated. All the bones are still connected. An animal dies today, the coyotes drag. I'm pretty sure that's extremely rare. Does Kent know that in museums they've put together the bones? Does he think that they like or they all crawl out of the ground like they look when they're put together in museums? I'm very confused. Drag it all over the woods or the buzzards or the ants. It's dumb to believe that fossils are billions of years old. It's not. It's not dumb. He can keep saying it's dumb. Doesn't make it true. Makes himself feel good, I'm sure. <coughs> Bless ah, excuse you. me here. Okay, Emma. You believe dinosaurs are related to insects and came from an amoeba, don't you? Agree with this tree of life in the textbooks, Emma? Or Mr. Nelson, who calls himself the sun god? Or any of you atheists, do you think this tree of- He's talking about Aaron Ra again. Kent's also very fixated on Aaron Ra, probably because Aaron Ra is one of the examples people give of Kent having been absolutely obliterated. That's probably why he fixates on, on Aaron Ra so much. That everything came from an amoeba. Emma, you're the one that's believing something crazy. Please stop. I despise someone who believes something without evidence. Well, Mr. Dawkins, why don't you despise the evolutionists and atheists? They're the ones who believe something without evidence. Atheism, once again, atheism is just a theism. It's just not being theistic. Atheism isn't a belief in something. There's no belief in something. We're not believing anything without evidence. That's entirely the point. Kent knows this. He knows this. He's so fucking disingenuous. Okay, Emma just introduces a few things here. I'm going to skip up to about two and a half minutes, right about here. She really didn't like you, Matt. She really blasted you. That's okay. A video. So we're going to carry on. We learned a lot about dinosaurs last time. By the way, I actually bought this before I knew I was going to do a video on Kent Hovind and talk about dinosaur land. I started a new cross stitch. Now, Emma, let me ask you a question. Is there any chance in a trillion years that cross stitch dinosaur could make itself? No, Kent, because it's a cross stitch. It's a cross stitch. The thing about cross stitch is I know exactly where it came from. We have a demonstrated history of cross stitch being made. We know how cross stitch works. We know how all the individual parts were created and I can trace all of this back to the source. So it's not a very good analogy, is it Kent? Or is that requiring some level of intelligent input? Huh? Everything just comes full circle, man. The universe is speaking to me. I am a skeptic. The universe is speaking to her. What's it saying? This is one of Kent's favorite things to do, which is to just take a comment from me that is a joke, and then cut out the bit where we laugh at the fact that it's a joke. That's, he cut me off saying, I'm a skeptic. The, the joke was that I'm a skeptic and I don't believe the universe can talk to me. And so I'm saying the universe, that, that's the joke. That's why it's funny. <laughs> I have had a look. I did find Kent Hovind's dis dissertation on WikiLeaks. Somebody sent me a PDF, which is really, really helpful. A lot of people were sending me his dissertation. Thank you so much for that. I tried, <laughs> okay? I tried. I've written a couple of dissertations. I've subsequently read a lot of dissertations as, uh, you know, studying. I've never seen one without a bibliography. Okay, Emma, let me explain. If you watch my PowerPoint presentation, I give references on just about every slide. Here's where it comes from. Emma, you want to know why my university dissertation doesn't have a bibliography? Because I cite everything in my PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> That's not an answer. That's not a rebuttal. 
That doesn't change the fact that a normal dissertation would have a bibliography. It'll have the Bible verse. If it's a Bible, it'll have the reference. If it's from a science journal, it'll have the science journal reference. Just about every one of my 45,000 slides is referenced right on screen, every one. So when I was going to do my dissertation for Patriot University for my first doctorate, I, they said, would you please just type out your seminar series? We love it. It's great material. Would you please just transcribe it? I said, okay. So we transcribed the seminar and they said, that's sufficient for a dissertation. I forget how many, what, how many pages it was, a lot. And I start off myself. They said that's sufficient for a dissertation because they're not a real university. It was sufficient because it's a diploma mill. You just give them a bit of cash and they give you a piece of paper that says you're a doctor, even though state law says this university cannot do that, they are not accredited. Just because they said it's fine doesn't change the fact that it's a fucking not a real dissertation. It's not a real dissertation because it wasn't a real degree. Or it's just transcribed from, it's just transcribed straight from my DVDs. Oh, then why does it say this book? This book. We made this book by developing chapters from the radio show. It's just lie after lie, nonsense bullshit. Seminar saying, hello, my name is Ken Hoven. You know why I do that? Because my name is Ken Hoven. So we transcribe the seminar and they get upset because it starts off saying his name is Ken Hoven. I can't help. We've just debunked this. We know he's lying. Well, either he's lying now or he was lying in his dissertation. One or the other. Let's listen to her here. Go ahead. Oh, Nothing. Okay. It doesn't even have a contents page and it starts Hello, my name is Kent Hovind. I'm not even joking. I was like, I can't do this on my own. So I thought if people are interested, this could be fun. If maybe we read Kent Hovind's dissertation as a live stream, that way. See, I'd love for you to read my dissertation as a live stream because you are preaching the gospel for me, Emma. Thank you so much. We covered that last night. You atheists don't realize it, but you're helping us get the gospel out. It's so funny that he says that because Literally nobody in that live stream, in the comments of that video, not a single person that watches my content and is an atheist or not a biblical literalist was like, oh my God, I'm convinced. Literally everyone was like, ha ha ha, what a moron. The funniest thing about Kent's whole atheists are spreading the gospel for me thing is that I've never heard that happen that way around. But I have had a lot of comments and messages from people who say that Kent's creation seminar series is what made them an atheist. Or it helped inspire them to study science, which then made them an atheist. So I guess it works both ways, Kent. Your people are hearing our stuff saying, wow, maybe he's right. They're not. I better get saved. Thank you, Emma. You're in a Please leave a comment below if that's what happened. If you watched my content talking about Kent Hovind and you went, wow, he's right, better get saved. Let me know, please. I'd love that story. Evangelist over there and don't even know it. Spreading the gospel. Thank you. He neglected to mention the fact that that video was actually a fundraiser for the Freedom From Religion Foundation. It's an open fundraiser, so you can still go back and donate now. You can donate in the future, anytime. It's open to donations. As of the time of recording, we have raised on that video $1,788. So at least some of this crazy, painful interaction between Kent Hovind, Matt Powell and myself has been worth it in some way. Way I don't have to try and get through it on my own and we can kind of help each other out with information and have a laugh together. I thought that would be pretty good. So let me know down below if you think that's a cool idea. For today then, we go back to October 27th's Whack and Atheist Wednesday. Like I said, there was another Whack and Atheist Wednesday last week on Matt Powell's channel. It was very much against terms of service on YouTube. I had a look at a couple of Matt Powell's latest videos, just to sort of like... I love that Ken just... Nobody... Ken and Matt, nobody's going to respond to the fact that they were breaking terms of service. Ken has expanded onto a number of other platforms with really minor viewership, um, and he describes this as moving to websites with more free speech. I'm not going to pretend YouTube is without flaws, but I would like to know why Ken thinks that he alone should have free access to this platform whilst breaking terms of service. Preliminary research and Matt Powell worries me because he's very good at sounding like something is obvious when he's talking total shit. He is very- Emma, you just had something in your mouth I would not want to hold in my hand. 
A word? I don't know how you could hold a word in your hand, but whatever you say, man. Does this Which make you... Bleep that out, do sorry. they feel smarter? That makes... Because you can curse, that therefore you're smarter? I think there was genuinely... I'll find it and link it down below, but I'm pretty sure there was genuinely like a study that showed that people who swear more are more are more intelligent or have a better vocabulary or something like that. Um, no, it doesn't make me feel smart. It's just a part of my natural language and I'm not a child. I'm not a child and this is my own space. So I swear. And if you don't like it, that's your responsibility to deal with. I'm not here to baby Kent Hovind and Matt Powell. I don't make my videos for them. I put out the videos that I want to put out talking the way that I talk. When I'm making my videos, I'm not considering how How's Kent Hovind going to feel about the language I use in this video? That's not how this works, Kent, because the universe doesn't revolve around you. The apologies for my swearing. First things first, despite both Hovind and Pal claiming to be great at debates, atheists don't want to debate me because we're so good at debate, it seems like they don't understand what an ad hominem is. The short version is, criticising the way somebody speaks or conveys a message instead of the actual message, that's an ad hominem argument, that's a fallacy. Now let's address the interesting part. First of all, Hovind is so incredibly childish in the way he talks to and about people. Multiple people address the fact that he kept calling me honey even after I expressed discomfort at it. He is known to manipulate people's usernames and names. He was misnaming Aaron Ra in this very video. He twists people's names into something cruel like a fucking schoolyard joke. Um, I don't want to use any real examples, so I'll just say, if your name was Dupe, he'd call you Poop like a five-year-old on the playground, trying to be a bully. But he doesn't swear, so his use of language is fine. Matt Powell particularly likes to pretend he's better than us because he doesn't swear. Truly holier than now. So I'd like to share with you a quick comment from Matt Powell himself. It will be censored, but just to warn you, it's very homophobic. In case you don't want to hear this, maybe skip ahead a minute. This is, this is a reply to a comment saying, this is why we have a no soliciting sign on my door. Oh, believe me, we're happy that you do. You and your couple of rep reprobate buddies aren't of any interest to us. Tell them to put some signs up too. Oh wait, Kyle may not have to though. All one of my friends would have to do is knock on the door and see him with his makeup on. Even just a little lipstick on that is a dead giveaway that he's a disgusting pervert. Movements like mine are just going to continue growing, no matter how many vids you and your couple friends decide to put out against me. BTW, if you didn't notice. I'm taking the gloves off. You bunch of can go to hell. I didn't even say the word because it makes me so uncomfortable and I still feel really uncomfortable reading that. It's a word, by the way, that has been used against me. Even though it's typically used against men, it is something that has been used against me on a dating app by a Christian person. Now, generally slurs aren't considered swearing specifically, but they are profanity. By any rational person's standards, it's a hell of a lot worse to direct slurs at people with the intent to hurt them than it is to casually say shit in your everyday language. That's not all Matt Powell has to say on the homosexuals. Let's take a look at his comments from an interview a number of years ago. As far as homosexuality goes, you know, I believe the Bible puts the death penalty on it. I believe it's disgusting. Obviously not by me or anybody in regular society, obviously. I believe it's the government's job to execute people. I believe that the Bible clearly says that homosexuality is a criminal crime. A criminal crime. It's one of the worst crimes ever. And obviously, I believe in humane, you know, putting to death. That's what the Bible says. I didn't write the Bible. This is the problem we've had from the beginning, and I would never have given Matt Powell the grace of the politeness that I have if I'd read these comments before my first video. We are trying to engage in rational conversation with people who want us dead just for existing. I guess according to Matt Powell, if you don't use swears, you aren't technically a terrifying bully who wants the people you claim to love to be killed by the government. As long as you don't swear, right? Let's listen to another clip from Matt Powell. And you're well, scared? You're scared to death to talk to me. You are. Dude, it's not a joke. You're, you're a skinny little runt baby that can't think for himself. And you come here, you constantly leech off me, then you go complain to other people, Oh, Matt won't, Matt's taking advantage of me. Dude, you will go to hell! I am not joking! Look at me! Matt, stop. Look at me! Stop. You look at me right now! Stop! That came here has nothing to do with this. I came here. We are going to talk you're about this. Gonna smile. You are insane. You think I am yelling too hard? You have lost Stop. your mind. Stop. 
You're gonna talk to me. No! You're gonna- I'm not gonna play anymore because it's quite upsetting to listen to somebody desperately try to get Matt Powell away from them and to stop screaming and be rational and for Matt Powell to not let it happen. That's very abusive bullying behavior we just listened to from Matt Powell. That is what Matt Powell sounds like when he thinks nobody is listening. There's a video linked in the description by Willow the Wendigo called The Real Matt Powell. I highly recommend you watch that if you are interested in learning more about what the real Matt Powell is like, but I think those comments give some good insight. So Matt Powell, do you really think you're better than me because you don't swear? Back to the actual live stream, I will say this. If they advertise their streams as a profanity-free place and that they don't feature swearing, then they're right to be apologizing here, but not on my behalf. If they want to create a space free of swearing, it is their responsibility to vet the content on their own show. That is what we do. That is what everybody on YouTube does. I didn't want to show cruel slurs on my channel, so I censored Matt Powell's comment. If you don't want some type of content on your own live stream, it is your responsibility to censor it. The content I put on my channel is for adults. My channel and all my videos are marked as not for children, and I speak in my videos how I speak in real life. I do not censor my natural language because most people are reasonable adults who can stand to hear the word shit without it affecting their viewing experience. The responsibility, Ken and Matt, is on you to censor anything you don't want your audience to hear, like I don't want my audience to hear Matt Powell using homophobic slurs. Every time you stop to talk down to me about the language that I choose to use, you are wasting your time on ad hominems to make yourself look better in comparison when it is your responsibility. Moving on. The reason that I speak with absolutes is because I'm absolutely sure of what I'm saying. People say, do you think you're wrong, Matt? No, I know I'm not wrong. Could you be wrong? No, because two plus two is four the facts will always be the facts right. the truth will always be the truth and the truth is hate to those who hate the truth you right. might call us hate preachers and and people that hate uh other no we love people we care for people that's why we tell them what the facts are and what the truth is we're not wrong and i know what i'm talking about yeah we're gonna come back to this in a second in the way he speaks however ridiculous he's the things he's saying. So again, I do recommend you watch that first video because we went into the whole dinosaur um, bones and preserving hemoglobin stuff. Last time we looked at some articles and it was actually really interesting and we learned a lot. Um, we learned that Matt Powell can <laughs> interpret information in any way he wants to manipulate it into fitting his 6,000 year old earth. Isn't this what the atheists are doing? fitting everything they find into their 4.6 billion year old earth? No. When have I in my videos ever said, how does this work so we can fit it into 4.5 million year old earth? Whereas every single thing Kent does ever, and Matt Powell, is to fit it into a 6,000 year old earth theory. So this isn't a good equivalent, and no, that's not what atheists are doing. So we talked about Mary Schweitzer, who is a paleontologist. She's she's currently researching molecular paleontology. So she's also a Christian, and there's loads of really interesting stuff online. I'll put some links in the description, but basically yep, she Mary is- Schweitzer stuff, okay. So yeah, that was Matt Powell giving me a, Emma, uh, I, speak, I speak with clarity because I know the truth. I have the facts. And then that's Kent Hovind, Skipping the part of the video where we talk about how Mary Schweitzer, Mary Schweitzer is the one who did the study that Matt Powell was using as his evidence for 6,000 year old earth in his original video. We're just explaining in this bit of video that they're skipping ahead of mine now, that Mary Schweitzer has come out and said multiple times that young earth creationists have misunderstood and misrepresented her findings. Matt Powell goes off about he has the facts and the truth, and then Kent conveniently skips past the part where we talk about how the actual scientist says that no he doesn't have the facts he doesn't have the truth how fucking convenient for them to just skip past that bit to maintain matt pal has the truth and is always right about everything it's it's gross it's really gross chime in dan go that ahead. a lot here we go the return of whack and atheist wednesday electric wackaloo what? there is so much echo in this video i wish they could fix this and make this better Actually, I kind of don't. The worse it gets, the fewer people will hopefully watch. And you said you can't believe the Bible. It contains contradictions to science. Emma, I am challenging you to show me a contradiction the Bible has to real science. Okay. Kent, in his dissertation, talks about how the first 11 chapters of Genesis are what make or break the Bible. It's his favorite bit. He's obsessed with it. That's why he does all this creationist stuff. So let's just stay purely in Genesis. Kent, the very beginning of the Bible 
is wrong. Genesis literally gets the order of creation wrong. God creates the earth before the sun, moon, and stars. I think even most Christians would probably agree with me that the sun and the stars were there quite a while before the earth was. Do a debate. I'll come on your program. You were worried about me uh, editing out stuff that you say. I'll come on your program. Oh, he's still pretending to want to debate me. That's cute. Or you can come over here and come on mine or just do it by Skype or something. You said it contains contradictions to itself. Emma, my video number seven of my series, seminar series, part seven, question, answer. I, co I cover all of the so-called Bible contradictions that I've heard. Oh, well, if it's in your DVD series made by you, Kent, then that means it must be accurate and I'll have to believe it. If you said it, it must be true. Thank you for providing that glorious evidence, Kent. If you got another one, show it to me. What is a contradiction in the Bible, Emma? You said... I literally, Genesis 1 and 2 contradict each other. You, you said you can't believe the Bible because you have trees proving that the earth is more than 6,000 years old. Well, Emma, I think you need to do a little more study on this dendrochronology. Um, here is a picture of the so-called oldest tree in the world, the Methuselah tree. Actually, I think Kent might need to do some more up-to-date research because according to my research, uh, until 2013, the oldest tree was the Methuselah. Isn't that funny that Kent's stuck in 2013? When he used that bullshit study before, you remember that pie chart where he said that I was wrong about 97% of scientists believing in evolution because 60% uh, of US Americans in 2013 don't believe in evolution? He's got some weird thing with 2013. Okay, so I was I was a little bit wrong, but I wasn't, I wasn't that far off. They have found another Pinus longevia, probably saying that wrong, um, in the White Mountains, this one's 5,062 years old. Obviously, I'll put the link to this down in the description because it's really interesting and cool. Though these are some of the oldest individual trees in the world, they are not technically the oldest living organisms. There are several clonal colonies, which are made up of genetically identical trees connected by a single root system that are much older. The Trembling Giant is a clonal colony made up of more than 40,000 individual quaking aspen. Located in Fish Lake National Forest in South Central Utah, the colony is estimated to be an astounding 80,000 years old. In 2008, peculiar circumstances led to the discovery of the world's oldest individual from a clonal tree, Old Chico, a 9,550-year-old Norway spruce located in the Fluffjellet Mountains in Sweden. I'm sure I've said this all so wrong. But the point stands, we have very old trees. And once again, Kent is using outdated information, whilst condescendingly telling me to do more research. And if you want to call Jesus a liar, we'll see how that works out for you. Is that, is that meant to be Jesus? Or God? What's going on with that picture? Your judgment day. Okay, let me play Emma some more. And Matt, you wanted to share something with this and let me get up to that spot here. What, six of them for 30 bucks for placemats or something? I can get a Emma, send us an address. We will send you one for free. We'd like you to have one of those. I'd love one, Ken, but you won't respond to my emails and I'm blocked from your channel. So how am I gonna give you my address? Oh, gutted. Young Earth Creationism placemat, sold. Uh on the back is all about Grand Canyon. When's that video? Oh, not the fucking Grand Canyon. It's a verb, Emma, not a noun or an adjective. Gee whiz. Sorry about that. I watched Matt Powell's video about the Grand Canyon. TLDR, the Grand Canyon is proof that Noah's flood is real. That's a whole separate Matt Powell experience of its own. It's funny how she says he speaks with such certainty that he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. What, do you not speak with certainty? What's wrong with speaking yeah. with certainty? Not when I'm not sure. Not when I'm not when I'm not sure. Not when I don't have the qualifications or the credentials. That's the point, Matt Pal, is that neither you nor I are scientists. I'm actually willing to be open about that. You believe you have the truth because you've brainwashed yourself. Oh, I could be wrong. Well, then why are you arguing with a model that you say could be wrong uh, when you yourself are claiming, oh, it could be wrong? Why aren't you arguing with something that's actually known to be factual? instead of, oh, I could be wrong, but let me throw it out there anyway. That is... First of all, what the fuck is that impression of me? Oh, I could be wrong, but I'll throw it out there anyway. My Matt Powell is way better than it is Emma Thorne, I'm just saying. The what I've said this a million times. Matt Powell thinks this is a bad thing. I think this is one of the wonderful things about being an atheist. I am comfortable saying we don't know. I don't need the God of the Gaps fallacy like you do, Matt Pal. You have to have faith. You have to have absolute certainty in something that you cannot prove because that's just how you've been conditioned, whether that's by other people, whether that's by Kent Ovind or by yourself. I don't have that. I am free 
to learn new things, to expand my horizons, to change my views if some new evidence comes in. Maybe you think your way is better, maybe it is Maybe it is better for you in your life to have more certainty, but for the, for the expanding of the human consciousness and for the development of our species, I really think my way is better. Being open to learning that we are wrong means you are open to learning, which Matt Powell is not. It's incredibly dishonest, if you think about it. It's like saying, uh, Jesus is going to come back two years from now, but I could be wrong. But he's going to come back two years from now. It wouldn't make any sense. You can't just uh, claim to be certain. And That's a weird thing to use as an example because that's nothing that I would ever say. I don't know why he's... I really don't understand Matt Powell's point here. Yet, oh, I could be wrong. You're either certain or you're not. No, that's not true. That's not... Have you ever... <laughs> Did you do statistics in school, Matt Powell? Did you do like high school level statistics? No, there is not just certainty and being wrong. Jesus Christ. I'm certain. That may not be the best analogy, but the point stands that you're either certain of something or you're not. Science me- No, no you're not. I can be, I can be 50% certain about something. I can be 80% certain about something. I can be like, I have no idea. I'm gonna defer to an expert. You don't have to be certain or not. What a stupid, ignorant way to live your life means to know. What do we know? Did I cover this? Well, she's going to advertise for Santa here in just a minute. Where are we go, right? I'm so, so I'm going to try and do my best to sort out the volume as I edit this, but like sometimes Kent's voice is just deafeningly loud for no reason. I don't know what is going on with their technology, but it's real fucking bad. There. All right. Remarkably dumb. Coming out that we did uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Wait till you ADS to see that one. Ah, anyway, bye. Wait till you see that one. Wait till you see how many debunking videos there are already of it. <laughs> well, teachers, before the flood came, the people lived to be 900. That's the age of the dinosaurs. Noah took them on the ark, probably babies. And so the flood 4,400 years ago. Imagine being that casual, saying something that crazy. <laughs> That's the age of the dinosaurs. Noah took them on the ark, probably babies. <laughs> Ken, are you okay? Are you all right? Buried all those bones. The best part about that is that the way it's framed, I was actually looking at Kent when I asked him how he was. That's kind of wonderful. I forgot. It's way back here at the beginning. I skipped it. Uh, where she advertises for... Well, Check just... it out. Oh, hello, lovely people. I'm just going to replay one of my embarrassing merch ads. <laughs> I just wanted to slip in and let you know that you can get fun holiday sweaters from emma-thorn.com. You have a few weeks to order to make sure that it arrives in time for Christmas. It's a sweater, it's a t-shirt, it's even available as a little sticker because look at it, it's so cute. It's so cute that your grandma might not even notice any of the satanic imagery. I'm totally- Your grandma might not notice the satanic imagery. Emma, here she is, Santa Claus, uh, let's see. That's like joking about cannibals killing people. Think about this. That's like joking. That's like putting a cannibal in your shirt. You realize, Emma, that Satanists actually kill people. They actually sacrifice babies. Oh, some satanic panic. Of course. Some outdated misinformation. What more do we expect from Matt Powell? This is a fucking classic. I actually, you know, the, the kind of upsetting thing about this whole conversation that we're going to get into about Satanism now is that I did a video explaining Satanism, explaining what the majority of Satanists actually believe. No, not in Satan. And debunking a lot of the myths like Satanists eat babies or whatever. And the reaction just to having the word Satanist in the title, the reaction was so vitriolic that it was like making people in my family worried for me. So I had to remove the video, which is a shame because I think it could have been a really good resource for people like Matt Powell who just have no fucking idea what they're talking about and will just say whatever bullshit myth they need to to make their point sound better. The Satanic Panic. If you're unaware, most people know this by now, if you're unaware, the Satanic Panic is a historical moral panic, basically wherein there were loads of completely unsubstantiated cases of satanic ritual abuse that just didn't happen. It was largely perpetuated by the Catholic Church. Um, over time, some of the accusations became uh, 
more associated with disassociative identity disorders. Really inf- interesting information on that. The important thing is that, dis- that despite the conspiracy, despite the allegations, no allegations were ever substantiated by the police. They would they were never able to find any kind of organised cult abuse. Matt Powell is uh, lying. He's perpetuating a popular myth because it makes me sound evil. It makes me sound like I don't know what I'm talking about, like I'm using something evil and terrible. No, Matt Powell. Satanists didn't literally sacrifice babies. You're a liar. And that's a joke to you. Think about that. Well, the She's... pentagram. Let's just, for a second, let's just even forget the the satanic panic is false, that Matt Powell is lying here. Let's say, let's say that there was a history of older versions of Satanism that were violent. That means that ascribing to some form of that belief now would be terrible. Christianity is a historically persecuting religion. What about inquisitions? What about holy war? Look at all the people who have been burned and violently murdered in the name of Christianity, in the name of God. You're being a fucking hypocrite, Matt. You're using misinformation and being a hypocrite. The pentagram. The first, the whole big thing's a goat head. Right. Right. The banana is supposed to be the goat. He's called Baffy. Thank you. But carry you on. You realize, Emma, that Satan is actually kill people they actually sacrifice babies you realize matt the christians actually killed people they burned witches and that's a joke to you think about that that's a joke to you matt the holy wars are a joke to you are the crusades a joke to you matt are the burning of witches a joke to you well the pentagram the pentagram the, the first the whole big thing's a goat head right right the banana is supposed to be the goat beard this is all satanic it's the moon what is it with you people on bananas? An example, she's right. Upside down cross. You notice that? You're right, Emma. This is all satanic. I notice it because I designed it. <laughs> Symbols. So cute, your grandmama. Grandmama. If you're going to quote me, at least quote me accurately. I would never say grandmama. Might not even notice all the satanic imagery. Why would you guys who claim to be atheists have something to do with Satan. If you don't believe in God, you shouldn't believe in the devil either. Because I'm a Satanist, Ken. For a guy who has featured me on his live stream about whacking an atheist like three times, he's not very good at research, is he? My membership certificate for the Satanic Temple is literally like up next to where I do my videos. It's too shiny for you to see very well, but I keep my membership card in my, uh, my phone thing. It's got my name in shiny letters. Very cool, actually. Why would you feature Satanic imagery in anything? because I'm a Satanist. What's the next question? And no, I don't believe in Satan. Most Satanists don't. I'm an atheistic Satanist. You know that I'm an atheist. Jim Jones, the atheist himself who murdered 900 people, who said, and I quote, he said, I am an atheist. He said that Satan had the good sense to rebel. He, he said, Satan had the sense to rebel, folks. Yeah, I'm of the opinion that you should rebel against tyrants. Right, because Jim Jones said it, that means that anybody who shares that belief is as evil as Jim Jones. That's not a disingenuous way to argue at all, Matt Powell. If Matt Powell and Kent Hovind are going to keep pretending that this is a good way to argue, I'm going to keep rebutting it with Christian equivalents. Do you know what's a Christian organization? The KKK. Does that mean that if you're a Christian, you support the KKK? Of course it fucking doesn't. He had the good sense to rebel. So Jim Jones was the one who said, who is an atheist, who murdered 900 people, said that Satan had the good sense to rebel. So you're, yeah, you're just joining hands with people like Jim Jones here, Emma. Okay, then you're joining hands with people like the KKK because they believe in the Bible, because they're Bible-believing Christians. No, I'm not joining hands with Jim Jones because I have an absence of belief in a deity. Shut the fuck up, you disingenuous prick. That is a disgusting, childish, amateurish way to make your opponent seem like a bad person. Jesus Christ, Matt Powell. Matt Powell is not only an evil person, but he's an idiot. Demonstrating uh, Satanism for everybody, claiming you don't believe it, but yet promoting it. Oh, the KKK is demonstrating Christianity for everybody. Yeah, so Emma, I would like you to please answer, and any of you atheists answer, if there's no God, why do you believe there's a Satan? I've already answered, thank you, Kent. We don't believe in Satan. If you spent two minutes on Google looking up modern Satanism, you would know that, but you are... You probably already know that, but you're a disingenuous bastard and you're going to continue saying, well, why do you believe this? Atheists answer me. And then as soon as we answer you, that's what you ignore. That's what you skip past in your next live stream because you're a fucking disingenuous prat. <coughs> why do you use satanic symbols on lots of your stuff? Because I'm a Satanist, Kent. Why? 
I'd like to hear that. Okay, we can go on for, Emma goes on for 46 minutes. We're not going to cover the whole thing. We've gone long enough tonight. Any questions or comments? We'll do more on Emma later if we need to. Yeah, I bet you will. I didn't realize you had to believe in Satan to put a pentagram on a shirt. Heckin' darn. Kent does this all the time. He says here my videos are too long to go through, but he'll waste so much time picking on something utterly inconsequential to make you sound silly. He does it like earlier when I told a joke, or if I use like wordplay, he'll just cut out the laugh and twist it to make me sound ridiculous. Thank you for plugging my merch though. I'm totally gonna do more with this design. It's really cute. Hello lovely people, it's Editing Emma. I <laughs> Literally I recorded this and got it all sorted yesterday and then yesterday evening I got a message saying, hey Kent's mentioned you again and it's really silly. He's throwing some some really stupid shade at me and Simon and Dan again. Um, so I thought oh, we would just listen to that and I'll slip that in here. This is from one of his proverb streams, is it okay to drink wine? British girls are the biggest teenage binge drinkers in the Western world. Now, Simon and Dan and Emma over there in Britain, you got a problem in your country. Why don't you work on that instead of picking on trying to make people not believe in creation? You spend your life fighting against the creator. Why don't you pick a new target? You got plenty of other stuff to talk about over there. Yeah, this is the worst country in the world. Jeez, what are we thinking? So that's whataboutism. It's a logical fallacy, which is not surprising because it's Kent Hovind. He doesn't understand how to argue properly without using ad hominems. Despite the fact that he criticizes other people for using them all the time. Yes, I've spoken before even about how the UK has a terrible binge drinking problem. That has nothing to do with debunking young earth creationism. Firstly, people can care about more than one thing at a time. And also, binge drinking being a problem has literally nothing to do and relates in zero ways to young earth creationism. Talking about young earth creationism being wrong and talking about the fact that spreading misinformation to a large audience is dangerous and encourages uh, blind faith and irrationality. Those two things aren't related. I'm still, in my, in my opinion, I'm still trying to do a good thing. Same with Simon Dan. It's just a different thing than the one you mentioned. It's this, it's whataboutism if you encounter it online, which if you talk about any of these kind of things, you will. It's basically like if you say, women in many countries don't have the right to be educated and someone is like, yeah, but the tigers are dying out. Why don't you care about that instead? That's what whataboutism. And it's as stupid as it sounds. So thanks, Kent, for that little bonus shout out. That is the last time I'm really interested in listening to and responding to Kent Hovind and Matt Powell. Because as we have proven in this video, they do nothing but lie, twist the truth, misrepresent the people they're talking about. Their arguments are all ridiculous fallacies. Kent Hovind, I'm 100% confident, is in it for the money. Matt Powell, I worry, is genuinely super brainwashed, and I think he, in particular, could be a very dangerous man. He literally thinks the government should put us to death. These men do not deserve our time. They don't deserve our attention. We're not doing this for them. We're doing this for us. I'm doing this because it's cathartic and I just needed to just out them one final time for everything they say that is utter bullshit. All I hope for right now is that their internet presence will continue to decline. They will continue receiving donations from their brainwashed followers. It is unfortunate. Do check out the links in the description for related videos. There are a lot of people that were super helpful in collecting information and sharing stuff with me, keeping me up to date. Robert Beatty has been wonderful. Atheist Junior has been fantastic. Everybody who's messaged me to be like, oh, Kent's name dropping you again. Thank you so much. I hope you don't mind this video having been... Well, rude, I guess. It's been spicy because I just, um, I'm not exactly a respect has to be earned kind of person. I tend to, I tend to open by being respectful because I think you should treat everybody with respect, but I will take that away if I lose respect for you and I have massively lost respect. The minimal amount of respect I had for Kent Hovind and Matt Powell, I have lost. They have lost from me because of how they have treated me and just the people that they are. So I hope you enjoyed this video in some way. I hope you found some of this entertaining and that made it more bearable. Hopefully this marks the end of my feud with the internet's lying grandpa. Let me know down below what you think of Kent Hovind and Matt Powell, especially if there's anything you didn't know before this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like it and share it and leave a comment down below. Apparently the new thing that YouTube likes is, uh, it likes if you go to other videos. 
So if there's anything else of mine that you think is interesting, um, there's an end card that will have some recommendations, just maybe check those out. Check those out and that, that might make YouTube happy. Who knows? Before we go, I would like to give a massive thank you and a big shout out to my giant chickens or small dinosaurs over on Patreon. Abigail Hess, Amalgam of Neuroses, Amber, Chris Simpson, Connie Wright, Conla Chicken Maximus Lions, God damn it, Conla. Curious Capybara, Danny, Faye Gregory, Fulcrum, Gaming Ridge, Henry Curtis, Izzy, Joe Rowe, Keith from Anonymous, Lizzie Gale, Lynn Dobbs, Miles Tegg, Mogaringa, Mr. Creosote, Nick Hook, Ninja Red, Simping on Emma Thorne, Seriously, Taxman, Tracy O'Raw, and Wasatch Witch. Thank you so much, you guys are amazing. I hope you've had a lovely holiday season. Have a very lovely week and a happy new year.